A blessed day, blessed morning to everyone, and happy feast day. Uh, and, uh, so today we celebrate the uh, birthday of the Blessed Mother. It's easy to calculate because from December 8 to September 8, we have the nine months. That's how they calculated place this uh, date September 8 and uh, connected with this historically it was the uh, in the 5th century it was the anniversary September 8 is the anniversary of the dedication of the church traditionally dedicated to the uh, Blessed Mother in Jerusalem Saint Anne, the parents of Mary. So, it is not just say the birthday of a an ordinary person, but the birthday also of the mother of the church. So, when a child is born. It revolutionizes the whole family as we must have experienced at the birth of a child in the family. There has to be adjustments now that happens also to us now. The liturgy, which is the official prayer of this family called the church, abandons a little bit its traditional austerity and allows itself to be carried away by the joy of the feast and to capture the joyful atmosphere of the feast we take some of the liturgical citations and prayers in of the mass today for example it says that when the virgin blessed virgin was born the word lit up, seeing the uh, antiphone of the Mass, or rather the uh, morning prayer. May your church rejoice and rejoice in the birth of the Virgin Mary, the dawn of salvation, insists the prayer of the Mass. As always, to give her the true light true value of Mary, we look to her in the mystery of Christ and of the Church. Today the clean, the clean flesh is born, the house of gold, the burning house where God will put his tent. This girl who is born will be the dwelling place of God. That is the divine motherhood of the Virgin illumines and gives meaning to her whole life. To return again to the beautiful image, images with the prayer of the church, we glimpse at Mary as a shining dawn who will give birth to the Son of Justice, Christ, the Savior of the world. Today, in the Gospel, is the traditional uh, genealogy, the narrative of the birth of the Messiah. And at the end of these promises, the promise Messiah came about. In the uh, long version of this uh, genealogy, there is no lack in, in it. The shadow of sin, women like Ta Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, Bathsheba, evocative of uh, evil, 
give way to another woman, Mary, from whom Jesus was born. The flesh of Mary is the flesh of Jesus. At the beginning of Jesus' life among us, we have always called him, called this the mystery of incarnation. That is, Jesus becomes flesh and dwells among us. And this flesh, we repeat, is the flesh of Mary. With Mary, we achieve to come to this close closeness to God. God has become a neighbor for humanity, for humankind. In solidarity with so many sorrows and pains of ours. The incarnation allows us to touch God, celebrate Him in His death and resurrection, listen to His words, have breakfast with Him at the lake after being resurrected, eat His body and drink His blood, touch His wounds like Thomas, all because He was incarnate and that flesh from Mary. If we are on our birthdays, we are happy. It must be celebrated. We also give her the gifts that proves our love for Mary. And what gift can we give her today? Let everyone try to ask oneself, what does Our Lady want from me? Just like her, what gave her joy was her son. Probably Mary would be most happy if we become close to her son, obeying him, following him, and loving him. We give joy, and our greatest joy to Mary is when we become friends, followers of her son, who is the true savior of humankind. We thank God for such pure gift to humanity, unmerited gift, and uh, such beautiful gift. Let us also value the presence of Mary, of her uh, role in our life as mother, and listen to her now. Do whatever he tells you. She would say, let us do the will of her son, and that would give her true joy of being mother. Amen.